Hey guys, welcome. We are going to make 10 different 2D shaders that you can use for your game. And we're going to combine them into one master shader to make your life so much easier. Ready? Let's go. Before we start, I'd like to show you a good performance reason why creating a master shader is a good idea. Unity's universal render pipeline and high definition render pipeline come with what's called SRP batching. That attempts to batch things together to reduce draw calls, which increases performance. You'll see that right now in play mode, if I go to our frame debugger here, you can see we have two draw calls, one for our weapon and one for our player here. And that wouldn't be weird because they are two different objects, except I actually added them to a sprite atlas here, which basically combines them into one image. So the real reason that this is taking two separate draw calls, according to the frame debugger, is because the objects have different materials. And it's right, I have a sprite lit material on my weapon and my master material, which I will show you how to make in this video, on my player. Now if I add my master material onto my scythe, our frame debugger shows one draw call now. Now I do want to make this clear, using the same materials alone does not reduce draw calls. Our objects are batching because they meet all the requirements for batching, which includes the same texture, which our sprite atlas did, and they have the same materials. So having the same material on as many objects as possible in your game makes it easier to batch your draw calls. But also it's just way more convenient for you as a designer. So let me show you what we're going to make. A pixel art shader, a distortion effect, an outline effect, and if you're curious, those three do work nicely together as well. An emission effect, a hit effect shader, a contrast shader, a brightness shader, a negative shader, a saturation shader, and a hue shift shader, with an option to animate it because why not? I'm not going to do the editor scripting for this material in this tutorial because that's way outside the scope, but as a thank you to my source code patrons, I've uploaded this version of the project which has this editor script to make it nice and neat and hide values based on these bools and add these buttons to return values to their defaults. So it's just a little bit nicer to work with this way. Okay, let's start with our pixel art shader. Here we multiply our UVs by a pixel resolution and floor that result basically meaning round it down to the nearest integer. Whether this results in 10 or 10.9, floor will round it down to 10. Then we divide that result by our pixel resolution, and you can already see it's broken our UVs into these nice chunks. Now every single shader we're going to make is going to have a branch node at the end to allow us to toggle it on or off to avoid unnecessary calculations if we don't want to use that effect. So our predicate is our bool. If that bool returns true, we plug in this result that we calculated, and if it's false, we plug in just the original UVs. Now, we're going to highlight every single node here, but not our outputs, and convert this to a subgraph. I'll call this pixelation sub G. So because we made this a subgraph, there's just a few changes we need to make. So you can double click to go into the subgraph. We actually don't want to output to our texture here we only want to output a vector 2, which is going to be our UVs. So save that. And now that can be plugged into our sample texture 2D over here, which gets plugged into our output. Let's do our distortion shader next. So to hopefully avoid confusion for all of the new shaders that we make, I've built them from scratch and will momentarily pretend that the past ones don't even exist, then we'll convert each one to a subgraph and see how they can be connected together at the end. Every shader we make is going to have a branch node with a bool for a predicate. False is just the regular old UVs, and true is what we calculate. So over here, to get a changing value, we're multiplying time by a vector 2 and plug that into a tiling and offset node using our regular UVs. Use that as the UV for a gradient noise to get it scrolling. This here just controls the scale of that noise. And then we're going to multiply that noise by a very weak strength and then add that result with our UVs. So now we have this scrolling noise on top of our original UVs. So again, let's convert it to a subgraph and we'll call it distortion sub G. And again, right away, we'll need to make some changes. We don't need our texture. What we need are UVs. 
If we just use the regular UV node here, it won't take our pixelation from the prior shader into account, so we need to create those as an input. Any property in a subgraph will end up as an input in the master shader graph. So we plug that in here and here. And again, our output for this one should just be a vector two for the UVs. Now we can connect this to this. And now that will be our UV for our sample texture. Let's just do a quick test to make sure that they're both working. So I will create a material that uses this shader, right click the shader and create material from there to do that a little bit faster. And as you can see, the pixel art shader is working, the distortion is working, and they both work together. Now let's do our outline shader. So first we do this bit of calculations here to give us proper results for pixel art graphics. That gets plugged into a tiling and offset node, and the offset of that node simply has a line thickness multiplied by a direction vector two. And actually you'll notice this is plugged into an output called alpha over here. So that's how we know this is actually a subgraph that I've called outline offset subgraph helper. Without this subgraph here, our outline shader would be absolutely massive. So now back in our main shader, we made eight copies of that offset helper subgraph. And the only thing that we need to change is the direction for each one. So this group here represents the four main directions, left, right, up, and down. We add all of those up and then saturate them which clamps the colors to be between zero and one. And you'll notice we're feeding this into a branch node based on whether we want to use eight directions. If we do want to use eight directions, we also want to add in the diagonal directions over here. These work exactly the same as the four main directions, except the directions are different. We add those all together and then saturate at the end. It's basically all the same. Then we subtract our original alpha from that added result, which gives us our outline. Then we multiply it by color to give the line a color. And up here, you'll notice that we're cleaning up the colors from our texture. This will save you a lot of headaches because if you don't do this here, your colors are gonna be washed out for your outline and you won't be able to use blacks for an outline color either. Then we add our original texture with our line to actually put them together. And we do the same thing with our alphas, add the original with the lines and plug that into our result based on whether or not we actually want to use the outline. If we don't, we just plug in the original texture and original alpha. So if we convert all of this to a subgraph, we actually need to add a vector four called RGBA here because what we're gonna do is use that instead of our texture here. Now we can split that vector for us so that we can still grab the alpha. We also need to add another UV input and replace our actual UV node with that here and here. And we're going to have two outputs at the end, a vector four for color and a float for the alpha. Now to combine this with the prior shaders, we'll plug the sample textures color into our RGBA here, as well as our most recent UV output. This alpha gets plugged into the final output over here because we actually are not gonna be touching the alpha again in any of our future shaders. So that's all the hard ones done, by the way. The rest are really easy and really fast. So let's do emission. So here we're simply multiplying our color by an emission multiplier, and that's literally it. And if you have a Bloom post-processing turned on in your project, you'll get a nice glow effect from this. And as always, though, we use a branch node so that we can skip it if we don't want to actually use this effect. And when we convert it to a subgraph, we get rid of our texture and add an RGBA input. And our output will also be a vector four. And we hook it up like this. Now let's do our hit effect shader. 
our color goes into a blend node, and we set that to overwrite mode. The blend is a color multiplied by a glow, or again, basically just an emission multiplier. And our opacity is just a float that is a slider between zero and one. Zero means there's no hit effect color, and one means that there's full hit effect color. And as always, we use a branch node at the end. So let's convert this to a subgraph. And same as the last one, add an RGBA input. Get rid of the main texture because we don't need it. And our output will be a vector four. And hook it up like this. Now let's do the contrast shader. And this one's actually the easiest yet. We just plug a contrast amount float into a contrast node and output the results. But again, don't forget your branch node in case we don't want to use this effect. So convert it to a subgraph. Add an RGBA input. Get rid of the main texture. And output a vector 4. And then hook it up with the rest. Let's do brightness next. We add our original color with a brightness amount. That goes into the blend input on a blend node. We're going to keep opacity at 1 by default and this will be on overwrite mode. So what this is doing is this means that we have no brightness applied at zero, and we're at full dark at minus one and full brightness at one. Convert this to a subgraph. Add an RGBA input. And make the same changes to the subgraph that we've made to the last few. and connect it up just like all the rest. Moving on to the negative shader. I wanted this to smoothly blend between no negative at zero or full negative at one. So to do that, our color goes into a one minus node, which becomes the blend input in a blend node. The base is our original colors and the negative amount is the opacity here. And again, this is set to overwrite mode. Convert that to a subgraph. And you guessed it, add an RGBA input. Get rid of the texture 2D. Vector 4 output. And connect it up. Moving on to saturation. Color goes into a saturate node. Saturation amount goes into the saturation input, and that's it. They made this really nice and easy for you. We're going to convert it to a subgraph. Add our RGBA input again. Remove our texture again. Add a vector for output again. And connect it up again. And final one, let's do the hue shift shader. So our color goes into a hue node, and the offset is going to depend on whether or not we want to animate our hue shift. If we do, we multiply time by the hue shift animation speed, and if not, we just use the hue shift amount property. Convert to a subgraph. Same as the rest, add an RGBA input. Remove the texture, add a vector for output, and hook it up. And there you go, 10 shaders combined into one master shader. You can create a material and put this on your objects and play around with it. It should be fairly easy to add your own additional shaders in here as well if you want to do that. I hope you enjoyed, guys. See you next week.